Cool. Hey everybody, it's Karen Bryant for M. Mejita. I'm talking with former UFC strawweight champion Carla Esparza, who will be back in action at UFC 225 against Claudia Gedalia. Uh, now this is a fight, Carla, I know a lot of people are really, really, really looking forward to. I am one among them. But let's talk about the fact that this has been booked and not happened how many times in the past? <laughs> Well, technically, this is like the third time that we've been slated to fight each other, okay. but she was actually supposed to be on The Ultimate Fighter, but because of weight issues, was not able to go. So, I mean, technically, you could, I guess you could count it as four. So, it's been a, lo a long uh, time coming. But she seems to have been a little more vocal than you in terms of um, uh, smack talk and kind of pushing, you're trying to push your buttons a little more. Is that a fair assessment? Oh, for sure, for sure. Like, I've never had anything to say about her. I mean, you know, I rarely have anything to say about anybody. To me, it's like, it's a sport. Mm -hmm. You know, I just go in there to compete and, you know, may the best woman win. But I think she's taken a little bit more personal. I personally think she's kind of, like, insecure because she's the one who, you know, wasn't able to show up every time and she feels kind of, like, you know, I don't know, weird about it or something or, like, people are pointing the finger at her. So she, I don't know, has something to prove, I guess. I don't know. Well, she's a very, very, very good fighter. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so, yeah, we we know that when she's in there. So when you look at her fights um, recently, what are you seeing in there in terms of uh, holes in her game? Because, you know, with Joanna, she was very strong against Joanna on the, on the ground, you know, wrestling her for the first few rounds. That really seemed to, um, you know, wear Joanna out for a while there. You're a very good wrestler yourself, though. So where where are the holes in her game for you? Um, to me, I just feel like, uh, you know, at, at this level, like this level of a fight, it's, you know, there's not like a whole lot of holes with anybody. What, you know, a lot of people have commented on is that she tends to, you know, uh, to gas out a little bit, you know, to wear down as, a, as the rounds wear on. You know, her first round is definitely always her, her strongest, mm -hmm. you know, and as far as her, her fighting style, I mean, she's a, she's a heavy hitter for sure. I mean, you know, great great double a really strong uh black belt in jiu-jitsu like i don't know i haven't seen her too much on her back like other than andrage so you know it's hard to say maybe we'll find out <laughs> but i mean overall she's a very talented fighter but you know hopefully i i think it's just about uh we have very similar styles in a lot of ways i think it's just about like who's going to be able to impose their will a little bit more, yeah. Well, you know, the last time you were against somebody who was very good on the ground, that was Cynthia Calvillo, uh, and that fight went your way. So I would imagine, does that give you a little bit of extra confidence going in there, knowing that, you know, Cynthia came in on a tear and submitted people bang, 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 and uh, and you didn't get submitted? <laughs> yeah, Cynthia's definitely a great fighter, you know, um, but she's also very green. Yeah. You know, compare. I mean, she's been training for many years, but just, I don't know if it was injuries or what, she's... Uh, not been like as active i think she only has around six or seven pro yeah. fights whereas you know someone like claudia is a much more seasoned fighter right. she's a black belt in jujitsu you know so i definitely think uh i'm not gonna look at my last fight and you know just take this fight lightly yeah well it's interesting too uh is this the first time you're on a win streak in the ufc right you uh, beat morose and then you beat Cla uh, cynthia as well so did something change, you know, in your camp, in your training, in your mindset to be able to put these wins together? Um, no, I th I think like I've always just you know faced pretty top level competition, yeah. and you know, barring like a what you call it, um, you know, I don't know. I had a pretty controversial decision in Canada, and like I I just feel like I always bring a pretty good game. Was that like, Randa? Did you fight Randa or no? Yeah, I fought yeah. Randa. Yeah, and that was, you know, pretty, con you know, mm. just one of those split decisions. So, um, you know, I, I feel pretty good about, like, my performances in the UFC outside of fighting Ioana. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone's been really tough, and I feel like just I've been, you know, grinding, grinding, constantly trying to improve my coach, uh, Kano Yama. I actually had surgery after I fought Ioana. I tore my shoulder in that fight, so 
that forced me to like step back and mm-hmm. slow down my like my striking game and work more movement, which I think is really like starting to show in my fights. Nice. Well, you were able to uh, defeat Rose Namajunas, of course, who's the current champ. You beat her on the Ultimate Fighter to become the champion. Um, and when I look at Rose, yeah, that's exactly what I, I think is her striking has come so far, right? So I feel like, you know, Joanna had that lead on people for so long. And it does seem to me, if I'm just looking at the division, that that's where the women need to work, is work on their striking. Joanna has that Muay Thai background. You know, she's just been doing it longer. Um, and would you, would you make the same assessment? Yeah, that, 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 that some of, you know, that, that's kind of the most important thing to work on right now? Um, to, to fight Joanna? Or? No, I'm just saying in general, like trying to develop the hands more because I feel like that's really going to separate people right now in the division is, is being a better striker. Um, I think it just depends on the matchup, you know, yeah. because every fighter is different and, you know, like one fighter might be a great striker but not have as good takedown defense as Ioana, you know. So I think it just kind of depends. I think with Rose and Ioana, um, Rose had like was able to meet her reach and I think that definitely like was a game changer for her. I think uh, stylistically like Ioana is able to like keep a lot of shorter people at a distance and, and play that game, but she wasn't able to do that with Rose. Right. Well, you are quite petite. You're what, 5'1 or so? Uh, five foot, half an inch, but I All rather. Right. <laughs> there you go. So maybe you could be at a disadvantage uh, as stand up and striking and stuff, but I feel like you're able to use that to your advantage in your wrestling. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I've definitely been working on my movement a lot over the last couple of years and getting in because there is that uh, reach uh, disadvantage, um, you know, and a lot of people tend to back away from me because they're worried about the takedown. Yeah. So I, a lot of my like last couple of years has just been like working on getting inside and, you know, using my movement to kind of like close the gap a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously you did become the champion, but, you know, I don't know that it was the greatest reign for you, right? I mean, how did you feel as a UFC champion? Did you feel that you were um, this held in the same regard as other champions? Um, I The division was so fresh at the time, and I definitely, like, I, I definitely, uh, you know, came back way too early uh, to defend my title, you know. Not, not really by choice, but, you know, it's one of those things. Um, it, it is what it is, and I wish I... You know, I wish I could have proven myself more, but, you know, the game's not over. Like, I'm, I'm still fighting. I'm always still working towards that goal of, you know, having that belt once again. You did have to sell your motorcycle, right? That was tough. I got to be honest, like, seeing your post about that and not being able to fight and you're not being able to get a fight and having to sell that, that, that was tough. Um, yeah, honestly, it was, like, a little bit frustrating because uh, just having, like, spent uh, after the shoulder surgery and, like, having spent so much time not fighting, you know, it wasn't about like spending, you know, friv- frivolously or anything, but just uh, not fighting for so long. And then, and then finally, like being healthy and then having to sit and wait another eight months until, you know, all, you know, all that. And I was just like, man, like, give me a fight, you know, it, it, gets, it gets a little frustrating sometimes. Now, you know? and I'm trying to remember now, did, did Jessica Aguilar also call you out before or no? Oh, my gosh. Because, that's... okay, so I know that, Claudia, you guys have your thing. That's one thing. But I feel like I remember something with Jessica and that you said, like, she only calls you out when you actually have something booked. Yeah, honestly, like, I'm not a trash talker, but that is the only girl in the division I will just, like, I have nothing good to say about. I will trash talk her. Like, she just, it's, excuse my language, but she's just, like, chicken shit. Like, I remember I was in another country and then, you know, for like a, an extended trip and she's like, oh, oh, I'll fight you right now. And um, for Invicta, when Claudia wasn't able to fight me uh, the day after weigh she was actually at Invicta and she was like, oh, you know, oh, I'll step in to fight you. Let me just get permission from World Series of Fighting. Right. And uh, Shannon Knapp gave a call to World Series like, hey, are you guys going to give us that permission? They're like, oh, Jessica never even called us, like never even contacted us. And. Just after, right after my shoulder surgery, right. she like called me out. Like it's like, girl, you know, I'm gonna be out for like six months, right. you know. And but what uh, was the beginning of that then? Where did that even come from? Well, we actually did fight many right. years ago. Um, you know, when I was a lot greener, um, mm-hmm. we fought in uh, in Florida, in, in her hometown, actually. Yeah. And another one of those, you know, things could have gone either way, I guess, but split decision. Yeah. And uh, you know, she broke her foot in the fight at the end of the fight, and I. I just always wanted the rematch, and I was right. like, okay, respectfully, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. But 
you know, it was just all she was just always been ducking me and ducking me. And then the the day after I won the UFC championship, you know, she she kind of makes a a catty post like, don't you know, congrats, you know, to the to the girls in the division, and don't forget who's still number one. Like, gotcha. I'm just like, what's the matter with you? You know, like gotcha. I don't know, I just don't like her. Yeah, well, it's a, a little bit of a random thing that happened with her today. I don't know if you heard, but you know, she's supposed to be fighting at UFC Utica in a few minutes, and they pulled it because of chapped lips or something really strange. Um, what? Yeah, no, it's weird, and I, and I don't want to say the wrong thing right now, but, like, what I've read is the commission thought maybe she had an infection with her lips because they were so chapped, but then the doctor checked around and said it was fine, but then at the last minute, the New York commission said no, so literally their fight got called off, like, now, basically, a, a, an hour or two uh, or so. It sucks, so she may call you out since now she didn't get to fight, and you're fighting in a week or so. The timing actually may work out, Carla. Well, perfect, yeah, I'm sure she'll call me out, like, maybe tomorrow or something. Okay. You know, I, <laughs> your division, you know, it's, it's interesting. I want to ask you a thing because, you know, um, as we know, like you said, uh, you and Claudia have been scheduled to fight before and there have been issues with the scale um, to make it not happen. And we know now that more overweight fighters are actually getting to compete. Um, you know, Mackenzie came in a lot overweight, seven and a half or 7.4. But, um, you know, so far this year, the people who have fought overweight have all been winning except for one last weekend. So it's seven and one. So yep. let's say, and I'm totally not putting it on her that it's going to happen, but if there was something like that on the scale, how would you feel about the pressure to still fight somebody when you know right now that the odds, you know, are not in the favor of the person who accepts the fight? Honestly, like, that's a tough one, and it's something that definitely has crossed my mind. Yeah. I try not to put, like, too much focus on it. I'm just like, because she's never missed weight before. I right, mean, that's other... what I'm saying. I'm not trying to assume yeah, she would. Yeah, yeah, you know? even, though yeah. She, even when we were supposed to fight, she actually stepped on the scale, made weight, and went to the hospital right after. So I'm, I'm not, like, thinking, you know, like that, but it's crossed my mind for sure yeah. because I know she's big, and I, and I know a lot of girls who or people in general who have these crazy weight cuts for years after years it's it, it starts wearing on their on their body and they can't cut it anymore so I don't know that's a tough one like Johnny Hendricks you know yeah. like cut drastic weight cuts and then his body just stopped responding you know so I don't know if I don't know that's a tough one you know um even my teammate Ian McCall he was supposed to fight um hand, hands of stone Lineker, uh, yeah Lineker. yeah and um you know he ended up losing the fight like yeah. you know and it I don't know. I just see that going not in your favor a lot of times. And I don't know that that would be a tough one. I actually asked that on my fan page. I was like, you know, cause I think the fans can be very judgmental too. Like yeah. if you don't take a fight, it's like, what? It's just a couple fit pounds okay. and you know, Oh, you're a fighter. You should be down to fight and this and that. But this, the, the crazy thing is like I was 122, you know, I usually show up to white fight week, like four or five pounds over. Right. You know, just dieting down. Yeah. So people cutting like twenty pounds, it's not just one or two pounds. It's like they cut so hard to get to that point. You know. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a difficult decision. Like I don't know if I would want to take the fight or if I would negotiate for more money or, right. you know, because I hear like sometimes you know the money that they have to pay goes to the commission, doesn't even go to yeah, the that fight. That sucks. So, right. You know, to, to lose that advantage, that's a tough one. I, I don't know if I would take it. And I, I guess it would depend how much it yeah. would be, too. I've never had an opponent miss weight against me. You know, I never, you know, I didn't even have amateur fights, which it's more common. So yeah. it's a really tough one, what, what I would do. Yeah, you know? it's interesting, too, because in the case of, you know, once it gets to a certain amount of pounds, it's actually a pretty good proportion of your body fat, like your whole entire weight. You know what I mean? You guys are... Fighting at a very light weight, you're, seven pounds is a big part of a 115er in a way, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, and like my friend Alex Chambers, I mean, yeah. uh, she's she's had people miss weight, like not even just a pound, by like multiple, like four or five whatever pounds against her, and she's yeah. lost, like, you know, and, and I commend her for still being down to take the fight, and I'm like, man, yeah. you're tough, like you're still down, but at the same time, I'm like, why am I going to put myself – you know, in that position, of course, I would, you know, I'm, I come prepared, I come to win, but it's, you know, it's not fair either. So I don't know if I had, if I would have like a definite decision. 
It's hard too because you know, especially when you guys are, you know, you're ranked. You're trying to work your way back up. You have a lot to lose. <laughs> it's not like you just lose a fight. You know, there's a lot more to it. So, um, yeah, I don't. I, 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 and I know fans do say exactly what you said. Oh, just suck it up. Just take the fight. But it's, it's easier yeah. to say behind the keyboard for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Nice. So I do say, like you said, you you stay closer to your weight. People should definitely follow you on Instagram. Like, yeah, you're very, you seem very, uh, you know, focused and regimented and, and make sure. Because, yeah, I feel like it would be so much easier to do it the way that you're doing it. It just seems like such a smarter thing. But I would imagine, too, your whole wrestling background really leads to your ability to really understand your body better. Actually, I, w- I wish I could say yes. But, you know, like, when back when I was wrestling, like, I didn't know anything about dieting. Oh, I, okay. I, I even wrestled at 125. Like, I would just wrestle with, you know, whatever, yeah. like, in college, you know. Um, for me, it's it's more of just getting older, you know, and just, like, seeing what's best for me. I used to, eat, like, take out, like, you know, every day. Like, I didn't care. Yeah. But now it's, like, you know, if I want to have longevity in the sport and I want to be prof- professional, like, i got to do it this way. This is the first time I did a series on my Instagram mm-hmm. of, like, displaying every week, you know, my progress pick so people see it's like I'm not showing up to fight week and then I'm a totally different fighter like a couple days later because I'm cutting 20 25 pounds I'm I'm doing this gradually I'm doing it the right way I'm doing the way that's you know beneficial for my health you know well it's inspiring I like looking at your pictures I'm like all right (laughs) better go to the gym (laughs) it's good stuff well listen if you could pick a perfect way to end the fight with Carla I mean uh, with Claudia how would it be (laughs) you're you're Carla so how would how would it end ideally in your mind? Um, if I would love to be able to like submit her just because you know somebody at at this level like a black belt you know who's so good at jujitsu yeah. like be able to submit them would just you know prove like you know where my ground is and that I'm just at that level you know. Cool. Well, I like I said, it's it's going to be a great fight. It's one that I'm really, really, really looking forward to. Um, I feel like you know the little bit of bad blood you guys have uh, is 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 fueling it, like it's adding to it. So I feel like it's going to yeah. be. Like, I can't wait for you to stare down. Uh, I'll be working the way in show. I'm really looking forward to that stare oh, down. Really? Awesome. Yeah, because you guys are both feisty, like you know, and, and it is one of those things where you know, obviously, I've seen a million fights, but. I definitely can internalize what you guys are doing more. It feels different for me to watch you women up there doing it and kicking ass. So um, yeah, just know sure. that, that like uh, in the studio, I might be hollering extra loud for, for, for the women for their fights. Um, but you guys both always bring it. So I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks so much, Karen. Good talking uh, to you. You too, Carla. Have fun. Uh, and I'm sure your girl Felice will be there, right? Oh, for sure. <laughs> She's there all week. <laughs> awesome. All right. Best of luck. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye.